prisoners. South Africa was not only a racist philosophy, it was a racist legal regime. It was the only post-World War II country that institutionalized racism as a matter of law. And so you had to transition from that apartheid to a democracy. How did you engage in that struggle uh, against the apartheid regime? What tools, what resources did you use to leverage it? Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for the invitation to address you this evening. Uh, when we look at Mahatma Gandhi, we do so <clears throat> from the South African perspective. Uh, I think, Rajmohan, you have heard this before. We always say that you gave us Mohamdas Karamchand Gandhi, and then we gave you back Mahatma Gandhi. <laughs> Because we came to South Africa and he experienced the humility, the discrimination, the abuse uh, by this then South African government. More South Africa British government against uh, his own people. And of course being a lawyer he took up a number of cases and he formed the first political organization in South Africa in the Italian Congress in 19, uh, 1894. The president was uh, Abdul Haji Adam, and Gandhi was the honorary secretary of that organization. His idea of uh, non-violent struggle developed in his struggle in South Africa against the South African government. People say it's passive resistance. It, it, it was more than that. It was, it was spiritual, uh, uh, and, and it was communal. And he was able to to say that he was able to organize the people to resist the unjust laws by going into prison. He became a type of a moral force in South Africa. How did that affect now our own struggle now? I read the other day that uh, Gopal Krishna Gokul, who came to South Africa in 1912, invited by Mahatma Gandhi, and Mahatma Gandhi arranged for him to meet the president of the African National Congress, John Dubey. And Dubey writes that he said he was very impressed the way Gandhi led the Indian community against unjust laws without using any violence. He became a moral force that the, that the government then, the authorities had to take uh, uh, cognizance of, they had to recognize uh, the, 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 uh, uh, the unjust that was, great, that was happening to the Indian people. So in our struggle, uh, the Gandhian philosophy, I think, played a very important role in throughout our struggle. Many of our leaders, including Nelson Mandela, was very much, uh, very much uh, uh, influenced by the Gandhian philosophy. Last year, we celebrated the hundred years of, of Nelson Mandela. If you find that in all of our struggle. The question of non-violence was the central theme coming from the Gandhian struggle of, of, of non-violence. Uh, in the 50s, for instance, we, 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 we had what was called, we adopted what was called the Freedom Charter, what South Africa should look looks like. And the first sentence was, South Africa belongs to all who live in it, black and white. It laid the foundation of a non-racial and a democratic South Africa. When we, in 1960, when our organization was banned, we did decide at that stage to form an armed wing. I was part of it and our instruction was quite clear. You are not to take civilian life. And our president, Oliver Tambo, signed the Geneva Convention 
I'm not sure how many liberation movement did that. Signed the Geneva Convention that we are going to conduct our armed action in terms of the Geneva Convention. There's no kidnapping, there's no suicide bombing, etc., etc. So the point I'm trying to make that when we negotiated for a democratic South Africa, the Gandhian thinking was very, very predominant in the leadership of the African National Congress, in the leadership of people who belong to the in the Italian Congress, for instance, and even in the African National Congress, uh, were very close at that time uh, with the Indian government. There was a close relationship between the African National Congress and the Indian National Congress, for instance. There was close relation. So when we establish a democratic South Africa, I think we are the most democratic country in the, in, on the continent. Uh, with strong human rights foundation, a constitution that, uh, th that places emphasis on human rights with a strong bill of rights, with the independent judiciary, the independent media, and, 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 uh, and a diversity, which I think comes from the Gandhian philosophy, that there was unity in diversity in South Africa. So when we say that how we reached to that point, part of our history come from the activities and the experience of Mahatma Gandhi in the early part of the 19th century. 